Greetings, everyone. Welcome to CRWS review on Atlanta season three, episode six, white <clears throat> fashion. And um, the themes that I, I am going to um, <clears throat> palette out are um, the tacky, trashy, and um, terroristic arrangement and interactions that we must have while in the system of racism, white supremacy. And that was um, ever present throughout just the tackiness, the trashiness of the system. And I'm um, getting um, started with the um, decoding the review, counter racist review is this um, one of the mascots um, attached to um, the uh, fashion concept of this episode. Um, I see here two things. I see a raccoon, a, a raccoon and a skunk, all right? <clears throat> and I, um, when they were talking about the purpose of this jersey being produced is that it was for their um, athletic line, you know, it's for their athletic uh, consumers. And uh, <clears throat> from race code war, we average understand athletic to, to me, non-white, particularly, not white person classified as black. <clears throat> it's like urban wear, you know, street clothing, nigger clothing, non white people clothing, um, et cetera. But I see here uh, the raccoon, and um, that has often been shortened to coon, and that has often been used to name call victims of racism who um, do what, um, um, who just do things under the system of racism, white supremacy that um, <clears throat> the confusion compels them to do. You know, and a lot of times they're called sellouts and coons and whatnot, but uh, they're just victims of racism. And I also see the skunk. And a, a skunk is a um, smelly animal. It's, it's, a, it's also a rodent along with the raccoon. So associating um, animals, <clears throat> rodent animals to Black people is very, uh, very common. We, we also learned from Race Code War that they use um, little uh, caricatures of cartoon characters and mascots to um, enthrall the youth because the youth connect with like having little um, characters like this um, on their clothing. <clears throat> so it's very, I think that was very telling. Um, and also, that's all I have about, about this particular thing. And then we um, literally a few frames over is this imagery represented with, um, Get it on the screen. Or next scene. Oh, I, I, I super pass it. Like next frame over, we are given this imagery of um, just this right here. We see um, this imagery with this uh, white uh, woman. Uh, or lot, around all this color, you know, and I think I think this is uh, symbolizing how um, white people, suspected racists, they um, use um, black clothing, clothing associated with black people to um, to to get what they thrive for, that color in them slash on them, and also um, we we can recall um, Alfred Paperboy mentioning pornography in this episode. And this is very um, re reminiscent of some sort of um, porn scene, if you ask me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that also reminded me of like some sort of um, porn scene set up. Yeah, it's just really bizarre. <laughs> if I could add, um, yeah, yeah, please do. the significance of the Central Park Five, I am not totally versed, but I have heard of this somewhat. There's a documentary or a show, I think it's been dramatized on uh, Netflix um, about sure. five five black young black males who were accused of raping a white female at Central in Central Park. They became known as the Central Park Five, and in this you see a white female wearing the Central Park Five jersey, and there are what appear to be five black fem I mean males, and now you know on the picnic blanket there are four, but if you look closely in the other on the other side of the picture you see one other black male sticking out wearing in the underwear. So there are five black males and a white female and then the Jersey Central Park 
five. I don't I don't think that is coincident coincidental. Um, I think that is that is exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, so th this is a great example of white people uh, how they will romanticize the these type of activities. These um, I don't I don't I'm not sure what happened to Central Park Five. I think they all went to prison for life or died. Somebody correct me, but. Um, yeah, hey, they went to greater confinement for a very long time, and now yeah. they're out of greater confinement. Yeah, so um, I guess to add also to the themes that I was seeing, um, especially in that first that first one is white people are ignorant about racism. That that was the whole I think the whole theme throughout this, and pretty much black people are to blame for the, uh, for what's going on and uh, the, like not being able to solve racism. Um, in, the, in the first scene you see while he's going through the, uh, showing the guy the, the clothing, um, there's not, I don't think there's a single black person in the room. So that goes back to, uh, we don't, there's not, there's no, who, was there any black person in the room when they were making these kind of decisions? You know, it goes, it goes back to that. It's trying to paint that white people have no idea what they're doing. And I think also the fact that this is supposed to take place in Europe is supposed to be some kind of past as well. Like they don't know they're European. That happened in America. But I don't think that's a, it's, it's part of the confusion, right? White people are very much aware of what they're doing and the, and the sorts of products they are producing. So that, that was one of the themes that I, was, I saw a lot especially in those opening scenes is white people are ignorant about racism. They have no idea that the, that the significance of the Central Park Five, they have no, they have no idea of the, the raccoon imagery. They don't know. That, that's, apparently that might be the curse that Donald Glover's talking about. I could be wrong. Excellent catch with your, uh, the Central Park Five. That, that was definitely, in plain sight, right before me, and I definitely did not see that. But so good eye, and just yeah, comparing like having that imagery, Central Park Park, Central Park Five, you know, um, that being coded as a, you know a porn gang rape scene, and also being co coded um, as um, you know them politicizing you know racist attacks against non-white people, you know, like making that uh, clothing. Attire Central Park Five is how was what really happened. You remember how Gucci made that little? Uh, well, it's, we we have a lots of documentation of racist clothing that I'm gonna share courtesy of um of Mr. Monsoon. But um, yeah, good catch, Mr. Quickie. Excellent. Yeah, like I I uh I called the Central Park part, but <laughs> I forgot the actual number five. Um, yeah, that was a that was one of the uh, the notes I wrote down watching it for the second time. Um, uh, like I said, they uh, called them experts, and when I heard that part, I'm like, okay, um, that's not true. <laughs> and then the uh, black man that was like, you know, a little flamboyant, said that racism is going to end in 2024. Now, the crazy part about that was that uh, why I wrote that down, because I just heard a broadcast with Gus, maybe like last week, where he was talking about the solar eclipse back in 2017 and saying that uh, racism should end in 2024, because <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be the, the, the uh, you know, you know, next solar eclipse in 2024. So I wrote that down. Um, but yeah, I said so far, yeah, uh, this this episode is just insane, insane, insane. I'll mute, but um, I got more, but I just want to point that out. That's all. I'll mute. I I couldn't help but um laugh, you know, at the expert thing. Sometimes I I feel that you know the things that are most true and most um damaging about the system are the things that I find myself laughing at. Uh, but the experts, you know, that for me displays like 
you know, black people are the problem. They are the main problem. You have these so-called experts there and they're not asking for the correct things. You know, we've got experts here to solve, solve the problem. Uh, the, the experts that the white people picked out and are racially showcasing and they're, they are here to solve the problem. But when the problem doesn't get solved, who do you blame? You don't blame the white people who picked them. You blame the victims of racism they're showcasing. Excellent segue into read um, some code from the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. And this is from a word guy, um, expert. Because yeah, not, not white people are certainly not experts according to Neely Fuller Jr.'s um, definition of expert from 113 of the word guy, which says, expert, use this word to apply to one who never makes a mistake, one who knows all things about all things, or one who knows all things about one thing. No, during the existence of white supremacy racism, the only experts on white supremacy racism and how it is practiced are the white supremacist racists themselves. And I mute. Certainly, uh, that, that isn't the first time. It certainly won't be the last time that the racist white supremacists will put black people up and call them experts. I mean, what exactly makes those individuals experts? Um, I think one thing is the, uh, how they were saying they were, uh, they've been in social justice for a long time. You know, that was something that they said several times. We've been doing this social justice for a long time. We're the, you know, kind of claiming that they are experts, right? Uh, once again, it seemed like uh, when they were in the in the conference room talking, right? There was I noticed in the beginning, the first time I watched it, I didn't notice that there was a white person in the room, but then I noticed that there is a white person in the room. Um, well, somebody who is definitely classified as white. So they're they're kind of being they're being monitored, right? While they're having that discussion, you know they are not talking about actual things that would produce a system of justice, nothing constructive. It's showing that when black people get together, they don't, they don't work towards any kind of constructive means. Everybody's looking out for themselves, trying to get what they can get. This person is getting some donations. This person's wanting a book deal. You know, and that, that is, um, <laughs> I think, you know, it's pretty, I guess it's somewhat accurate, you know, considering how BLM has been in the news lately. But, and also that, that uh, one of the victims, the, the anti-sexual one, he was wearing, he had that scarf with BLM on it the entire episode. But, you know, they don't get together to talk about anything constructive. And, you know, when Al is attempting to, you know, do his best to create or get something constructive, he is met with a lot of resistance and pretty much people getting off topic. Precisely, just a lot of uh, <clears throat> sabotage and, uh, <clears throat> and just lack of, uh, of um, actual attention and seriousness to um, the matter at hand, I observed from um, everyone, all of these so-called um, activists. I don't know what activists are supposed to be. I, that's why I don't consider myself one. And um, like this Khalil victim of racism, um, just a uh, very, uh, just telling, um, this is very uh, tragic and a good display of um, the many, many, many non-white people who have, um, you know, been allowed. And um, it reminds me of another theme about this episode, racial showcasing. Racial showcasing is um, throughout this episode. Yeah, and all of these um, characters that we saw, the um, all the non-white people, the so-called um, Asian, the so-called um, um, maybe uh, Latino male, non-white male, whatever the I'm, I'm going to get a, a still, I'm going to get a still soon. But we're talking. I'm focusing on Khalil uh, right now, who I, I suspect. Uh, I mean, before I get this image off the screen. Um, we're talking, this film is about white fashion, white fashion is just racism, white supremacy. And we have right here, Coolest Monkey and the Jungle, 
debacle racism from um H&M and we have um Prada they were making little um accessory clothing items that look you know very overtly racist if one he changed. they were making racist keychains oh yeah and those are yeah. large keychains yeah, these are they are, are keychains and uh the list goes on i mentioned this one earlier just in your face racism white supremacy uh, but uh, we're talking about the total global system and um hopefully this is um some motivation to solve the problem but yeah uh i suspect um khalil is supposed to be a um reflection of um, D. Ray, which is a victim of racism. And I suspect the um, the uh, Black female who was also at the table is supposed to be some sort of reflection of the Black Lives Matter uh, Black female person. But anywho, uh, just an example of racial showcasing. These, these um, victims of racism are not actually working towards solving the race problem and producing a system of justice by guaranteeing no one is allowed to be mistreated and those who need help receive constructive help. They're not working towards that. They're working towards of improving and increasing their own comfort and their own glory and material gain, just like the racist white supremacists have trained them to do. So it's really um, an excellent display of that. And I, I really hope um, people can take that away who may find this broadcast that what this episode is displaying. Because these are not activists or, or, or people who actually uh, care about so-called Black people. They're just victims of racism, highly confused victims of racism who have been trained quite well to not care about Black people and to treat Black people in a manner that white people treat Black people. Um, as you know, a way to um, gain um, you know, gain something to benefit. You benefit from black people. You're not supposed to help them. You benefit from that. You benefit from their struggles. But actually helping them do something constructive, you know, that's not what we do in this so-called social justice um, field. And this character right here on the left, this um, non-white male. Um, don't really have much to say, you know, besides that, hey, if you are non-white, you are still a nigger. I don't care if you are so-called Mexican, so-called whatever. If it means not white, if it means that you are not a white person, hey, welcome to the nigger club. Hope you are working to solve the race problem. And um, oh, five, go ahead. I wrote down Paul Wall because that's all I kept saying every time I was looking at him. Like I, I thought of Paul Wall every every time I saw him on the screen. So that's what I wrote down. So I didn't think he was a a, a non-white person at all. I think he's supposed um, to be representative of Sean King, right? Possibly. Oh. Not, not a, mm, I, don't, I, 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 I think I think nice I don't think I don't think any of these characters represent any one person. I think they represent examples so for example this this person is simply a non-white person who would probably be classified as brown by the white supremacists he is a someone who probably is of spanish descent who you know who says the n-word who um has no problem calling black people nigger uh slash nigger to their face um i think he's represent. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely um, not white, but also definitely non-black as well, and he's, he he represents those people who uh, infiltrate black spaces and benefit from, uh, you know, black black things. So black people are given trinkets and given um, pitiful handouts. He's he's there to collect them. He has no uh, no real uh, care for black people. He doesn't value black people. He is definitely possesses a white supremacist mindset. Uh, as he was trained to do so. Um, but I don't think he is supposed to be any one person. Like the the whole concept is that he represents the millions of people who've been brain trashed to um, say nigga, call black people nigga to their faces, knowing that they're not black. And then thinking black people are so stupid that they can call themselves black in front of black people. And then you have the people like the, uh, Khalil and the black female who allow it to happen. Paperboy being from the streets the gutter as they call it in the show he he doesn't have a problem calling 
and calling um a snake a snake or saying you're not you're at least questioning him at least trying to be codified in some sense, some form or sense but um I, I do think all the characters represent like uh you know just examples the killer reminds me of billy porter he reminds me a lot of uh like anti-sexual uh black males who have you know putting themselves on the white pedestal to be glorified and to receive pitiful handouts um I, agree. Uh, yeah, I think i think focusing on like the racially showcased people and like identifying them to one person is like not what the the show was wanting people to do is wanting you to think about this is a global problem. The racism is pretty much a global problem. And every person you see has another copy because they all have the same mindset, you know, they're all programmed the same way. I think yeah. the codified person see that and that makes sense. But I think that the intention yeah. is very blatantly like this is Sean King, like because of the exact things that they're saying are the exact things that they say about Sean King. Yeah. Like I that your perception is very correct. Yeah, but I don't think Donald Glover is codified enough to think about it in that large thing. I think he's just taking shots at his <laughs> yeah, sister, I think your analysis was very, very uh, stellar and um, profound. But um, the people behind the show are not putting these images together to teach us about white supremacy. This is why we we are here, you know. So. Um, yeah, I understand that, and uh, I no, think, totally think agree. Being, uh, yeah, thanks for correcting my confusion for like um, forgetting that. Yeah, I did that. These are like archetypes, caricature. They have churned out thousands of Sean King, churned out thousands of Billy Porter. I don't even think about Billy Porter um, at all. I don't think about D Ray um, because of the fellow um, host mentioned it. Um, but yeah, this is uh, excellent. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I I also picked up some dialogue from the beginning that um i suspect associates like high like white fashion with you know child pedophilia uh the the main guy i guess the guy who was on the board the white odor the white odor male he mentions that um uh this he's, he's like what's this design and he says it's a, a rock star a sexy rock star kids love him so to me like whenever you contrast sex and then the next line is associated with children to me that's like a code and um and it's very very uh intentional and to have a, a old white male and the episode's called white fashion it's very interesting to hear to hear um like sex and then you know oh kids love them very 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 suspicious uh programming and suspicious dialogue uh spoken by the the white male in the beginning did anyone else catch that yeah. Yeah, I caught it, um, and pretty much now I'm thinking of J Jimmy Savile, <laughs> you know, a, a guy that was in the UK. Now, granted, he wasn't in fashion, but but he did, you know, abuse children. Well, I mean, well, he he like you know sexually molested children. But, yeah, he destroyed children, thousands of them, perhaps. Yeah, thousands for sure, over decades. Yeah. Now, yeah, he, he he's he's in the same um league with the these fashion so called fashion people. And um, yeah, I excellent another, another fascinating um, decoding. Uh, I, I did that. It was highly suspicious. Them like you know mentioning children and sex, um, along the same lines, you know. And that and yeah, this is what the system white supremacy does. You know, you know, rapes children globally. You know, and it it, it produces um, children out of it, it appreciates raping children so much that hey, it it makes children out of everyone not white you know I'm, I'm i've been a victim for quite a while i, I am still classified as a children by uh, racist man and race woman why because they like me in this children um position it's, it's, especially if they are able to continue raping me in this position so very very um bizarre but this is this is racist culture this is white culture i suspect could be incorrect but um i suspect it is like miss b I apologize for coming in late. I don't know if anybody mentioned this earlier, but the image that's showing right now. So the lead white woman, blonde hair, race cold war. The designer is wearing black. The lead white woman is wearing black. The lead older businessman, he's wearing navy blue. His assistant, well, I suspect this is assistant. Um, she's wearing all black, total black. 
And um, I think there's something to say about that. Um, did anybody else pick up on that? The clothes that they're wearing? Yeah, I, I, I picked that up, um, especially when they're talking uh, business and talking about how to um, solve their problem. And also he wears black at the, uh, the panel, which is also orchestrated to appear as if it's like a, a final supper, the last supper, the, the famous painting of um, white Jesus and his disciples, you know, all gathered around and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so I, I did see that as, um, you know, just them being knowledgeable of the, you know, they, they, they wear this blackness to empower themselves, to feel themselves, you know, they, they are, you know, highly insecure about the uh, genetics that they possess, you know, and hence why they have to modify themselves and, you know, associate, you know, our existence with the material things that they create, such as clothing, shoes, you know, Central, Central Park 5, uh, when I saw the opening, I thought it was, I immediately knew that it was going to be an interesting um, episode because that's exactly what these companies do. They, they use the uh, extermination of Black people as a way to make billions of dollars, you know, a year. Did y'all notice the Black male holding a banana in the picnic thing and the image? Right here. Did you notice he was holding a banana? I, I, I didn't I notice. I didn't so. notice that. No I, do. I did not notice that. That that was the first time, third time, because just thank you, Helen, for pointing this out. This is how racist men and racism are masters of hiding things in plain sight. I've seen the image like, like a, a, a number of times now, and it took it being pointed out to me to see it. And this is largely how the system of white supremacy works. It's so refined. It's so in our faces, twenty four seven that. We, we sometimes we need someone to point out for us because uh, no, I did not notice that. And um, wow. And the white woman, she's face down with her eyes closed, like as if like she was in the middle of an orgy or something. Yeah, I, he, I don't know. Her face. He looks like sleep. Yeah, you know, the black man with a banana looks sleep. You know, it looks like a. Did anybody was anybody able to decode the part where the designer said, "Get this." The, talking about the white model get her a cigarette she's freezing was anybody able to decode that anybody get catch her that? a cigarette, cigarette she's, she's freezing, freezing. yeah hmm. do you well, remember here, that part? no i don't i don't remember i don't really, I can't recall it but just decoding those combination of words um the, the cigarette is um a white phallic symbol you know and Oh, the wife, the wife Alex provides one heat, you know, who, you know, comfort, the wife Alex providing one comfort, you know, and then that pairing that with the, you know, anti-sex black male, you know, and that is the ultimate, you know, drive for comfort going into the anti-sex realm. But um, I, I may just be, you know, rambling inward. Anybody know who wrote this? Uh, I I didn't see watch the the credits. Actually, I didn't, I didn't even have credits on the the one I watched, so I don't know who wrote the episode. I suspect it was Donald Glover and his brother Stephen uh, Glover, I believe, but I could be. Impressed. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, um, who wrote the, it? Uh, Alex Oro. I don't know. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um the uh, person that directed it also wrote it. So. Oh wow. Oh, that's why I didn't catch it. Ibra, oh, okay, because I was thinking I, about who wrote it. Say it I again. Uh, Ibra Ike. Uh, he was. He's Nigerian. <laughs> Hence, uh, mm, the Nigerian Hence Darius king. wrote. Yep, yep. Okay. Oh, I knew uh, when Nigerian wrote it because yeah, those were because yeah. those were. And, and I've I've heard there's quite an anti-sex uh, um situation going on in Nigeria as well, so-called Nigeria, if such a place ever existed. Yeah, it's spelled the uh, I B R A, and then his last name is uh, A K E. Yeah, so I, I um, I'm trying to get it on IMDb, but uh, maybe experiencing some sabotage because it's not loading up. Yeah. Um, um, I just wanted to mention the uh, since talking about like not being Nigerian and being classified as Nigerian, whatever uh, that means in a system of racism, white supremacy, the uh, the uh, hyper violent actions of the white people, uh, like 
the white lady who um, bought out the black business and stole their uh, entire brand in a matter of like a few days, it looks like. Um, and um, that just shows gentrification. I actually live in London, so I see this happening, you know, whenever I leave my house, I just see a racist white people doing their best to uh, mistreat those around them. And it was interesting when uh, Darius throws away the food and um, he's being, a white lady runs past him and tell him, tells him, you should recycle that, you know, you know, and that's just symbolic of, I'm telling you what to do. You know, this is, was your neighborhood? You thought it was, but we're here now. And uh, my dog is here too. So recycle so my dog can have clean air and clean planet. Very uh, symbolic uh, episode. And I'm not surprised that Nigerian wrote it. You know. Yeah, uh, I wrote down, help a white person, no, no. And then if you actually like, you know, watch her, she is studying everything, you know, what are they eating? Um, like even she's like, you know, pull out the uh, Shazam app, just to hear what the, uh, what, what like, you know, music was like, you know, being played. So, I mean, she was studying everything. Again, don't have white people around you. Don't have white friends, don't have white friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I called that the uh, second time. The one who asks questions is in control. Notice she asks a lot of questions, a lot. Yeah, I wrote I wrote that down too. I, I wrote she was learning that entire that entire episode um, or that interaction. This is also the the second time I believe in this season where uh, there's been a scene with Darius and a white female. I think the first one was you know the white female was crying. Um, Asian. Yeah, she was, she was Asian, but then uh, the the white female was the one that approached him, like oh, that, uh, talking to him about the incident, like oh that was horrible. How could she do that to you? Blah blah blah. And now this this scene, and I think in both episodes, like they touched his knee, like they touched him on the knee and stuff. I that's something that stood out for me instantly when she did it <laughs> on the on this episode. But it seems like uh, for Darius. Darius obviously is like the less, I guess, least intelligent of everyone or portrayed to be the least intelligent. And yet he's always being taken advantage of by these white females. I mean, everybody's being taken advantage of uh, on this on this show, but it just seems that Darius, because of how like unintelligent or confused he is, he is um, he's constantly being like targeted. Don't you feel like too, like the the way they write the show, he's not even like human. Like he seems like an android or something. The way he's like so monotone and just kind of repeats these lines, but it like he has no emotions to anything, doesn't react to anything. And he's so, also like, um, what is he? <laughs> impotent? It's very are, weird. Are you talking about uh, Darius? Yeah, he's yeah. the ultimate victim. He's yeah, like, I, agree. Ultimate, I agree. Like victim. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely has been um, victimized to a high degree and in this episode, just but be the fact like what um Miss Ash just um mentioned how he's um presented to be yeah, very um um just robotic and um the way he um exists and very yeah, very monotone. He does not have robots don't have genitals, can't procreate, he can't procreate, he doesn't have genitals. Remember, they were crushed by um black people in so-called uh, Nigeria. And um I don't know if anyone caught this, but I thought it was hilariously in your face. Black people are not people in some white supremacy. We are robots. We are food. We are servants. But um, oh yeah, yeah. Anybody see black people are food? The dairy is he's literally a food item. On yeah, on, <laughs> he, he's top of the list too. Top <laughs> yeah, of the list. yeah, exactly. Top of the list. You know, and this is um delectable Negro. You know, to, and you know, go ahead. Yeah, there's you know at the uh this is when, when Ash said animalistic and non-human, it reminded me of the the commercial that they made, how the uh, white people and the uh, the brown people and anyone who's not black is allowed to say we are we are all from this the hood, we all share a hood or whatever. But the the black males said things that were incoherent and you cannot understand what they were saying when they were I'm talking about the black and white advert. Like, oh yeah, they were like shirtless, holding money. Everyone else has clothes on, and um, they they look kind of poised in a way. And the black people are just, you know, bags of money, gold teeth, uh, not speaking 
just gibberish, you know, just complete gibberish. And of course, they're at the bottom, you know, sitting down while everyone's lining up and like behind them, standing over them. Yeah, the most pitiful at the bottom, you know, and not allowed to speak either. I thought that was uh, very hilarious. Uh, when you understand the programming, you could kind of see how they're they're just really poking fun because um every single person in the background spoke the line we brought off from some hood, but the the two the the dark skinned black male right here did did not he did not say that you know, he he only spoke in non coherent lines. And he had money to us there, right? Yeah. And there was a person at the top. It's a it's a it's a black person with the whitest skin for some reason. Blonde so albino, yeah, with albino, so called. With the uh, the last scene that you're talking about with Darius and the food truck, um, I thought that that was interesting. I felt like it was making fun of black people and kind of the uh, attachments that they have to food. Because, I, I mean, a lot of things have happened to Darius, and it seemed like he drew the line at, like, the dish that she made. You know, I was like, that was it for him. You know, he, I don't, I mean, I heard cheesy jalaf, and that was really uh, tough to hear. But the, it seemed like Darius draws the line at food, and that seems to be the case for many Black people. I think many Black people will let... <laughs> Many victims, I, I, I could be an error, but I suspect that many victims will let white people do whatever they want on the planet, but they cannot touch their food. You know, they cannot uh, claim that they make better food than them, and white people cannot claim that they make awesome dishes. But so I thought that that was interesting. It just seemed like, you know, like I said, Darius draws the line at, at food, you know, the, uh, the pink, the peach. Uh, I can't remember. She said the peach reduction and chunks. I don't even know what that is. But he, you know, after he heard that, he left. I don't. I don't even think he was bothered by the fact that she was making like the whole Nigel thing or the fact that he was a item on the menu. But the the fact that it was the food she was making. So I, I don't know. That that seemed interesting to me. Yeah, that. That allows me to conjure these thoughts of wow, you know, not white people, you know, we don't care that we're on the menu, but we care about like, you know, <laughs> some of the things that we make on the menu are are, are taken away or changed because white people um, are doing so. Interesting. And also notice that a Chinese, a so-called Chinese person is preparing the food to her right. You know, I saw that. I was wondering if is if he if he's Chinese or not, but okay. you know, tragic arrangement. Or or Asian or some, yeah, some Asian. something like that. Yeah. Um, I want to go back a little bit to the meeting that the non-white people were having and the white people were in the background. So every time white people practice racism and white supremacy, like so-called um when I mean so-called, I mean like they're doing it actually with the keychain and the shirt and you know, king of the jungle and all those things, right? Every time that happens, non-white people will be like, oh, well, why don't they have non-white people? Why don't they have black people on the board so that they don't do things like this? Like, so they don't practice racism, whatever, you know, get some ideas from black people and that will prevent them from doing these things. And every single time I think of a setting just like this, where black people are there and they're talking, right? And they're having ideas. And then there's some, there's a white person background, like, nah, no, yes. Like, we don't understand that. We don't understand that white people are still pulling the strings, that they are in control in these situations. And um, that's why I like the fact that Donald Glover put this, this scene in it and that we could break it down because, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, when um, uh, I can't think of the uh, antisexual's name again, um, but pretty much he said "Raising the Sun" had uh, Julia Roberts in it. That made me think yeah. of um, last year somebody bringing up um, Julia Roberts playing Harriet Tubman. So uh, I remember there was a joke about her possibly playing yeah. Harriet Tubman. 
And even when I say Khalil's name real fast, it sounds like I'm there saying kill him. It sounds like I'm saying kill him, <laughs> Khalil. Oh, geez. Don't don't think that's by mistake. Don't none the lighting, their clothes, none of this is by mistake. None of it. So yeah, you know, black female in a in a, in a wheelchair singing uh uh, uh so-called Negro spiritual at, at the meeting, and then you got uh Boucher. That's the guy that was doing all. all all of the clothing saying that he was um he was the least prejudiced <laughs> at the actual meeting. Like, come on, like you 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 a white person, man. Like it's it's no way that you're the you know least prejudiced up there. So like, and note and notice how they go from racism or you know practicing racism to prejudice. Like I don't know where where'd they get that from. Um yeah this whole thing was a farce. Oh yeah, and notice yeah. um Paperboy shirt, it said not fake. In the back, it said not, and in the front, it said fake. Yes, yeah, very, very much intentional. Um, yeah. Helen reminded me of um, uh, a thought I had about um, what was it? Um, it's going to come back to me. I'm going to meet myself if I can remember. Yeah, I, I would please, uh, I'm going to use the time to remind folks to please share this broadcast on your social media um profiles if possible please share oh yeah that, uh, all right mm -hmm. yeah please share your socials uh twitter uh facebook instagram whatever you got please um i uh kill him the the name definitely intentional i i didn't get that anagram uh like vocal sounds from the name but uh the 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 nickel treat uh, by Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon used to have a, a thing. Um, I never saw it before my time, but um, it's mentioned for a reason. I'm pretty sure it's, it's an actual thing. Um, but uh, it's just a, it's a it's a um, it sounds like obviously it sounds like nigger treat or or, or uh, nigger or nigger treat, whatever you want to say it. But um, yeah. Let's they use they they, yeah. they use the combination of, of words to to produce. Uh, the word nigger, you know, to yeah, produce the, the the programming, you know. All right, let's see what Nick or Tree sounds, how it sounds when we say it really fast, okay? Nigger Tree, 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 Nigger Tree. It sounds like nigger, Nigger Tree. All right, it sounds like nigger to me, but you know, racism playing side race code war. That's a shout out to race code war. Without that, we I would not understand like word associations or how you could say something faster and you could produce. A sound so this is you know white people clowning us while um, we are ignorant to it and and also um even when when um earn and uh, her name is b i think um v yeah him when, when he yeah vanessa when he's telling her about it it sounds like when he's saying it it still sounds like uh like nigger tree it's at the end. yeah yeah it's at the it's like the final scene something very interesting about the end towards the end like this scene right here so when they're about to kiss Ern says to um Vanessa like did you steal the bag I mean did you steal the wig and I'm thinking Van is acting very interesting I don't know what's going on with her and I'm thinking you know what remember some episodes back when she she went to Germany when they went to Germany or whatever. And, you know, I think she talks about like being around white people. And I'm like, oh, Ern knows that she's been around white people and she's picked up a lot of their habits. So it could be possible that she stole the wig. Oh, that's why he said that. That's what came to mind when, when he asked that question. What do y'all think? I think, hey, when you're in a system of white supremacy, you are going to behave like a white person, like a racist, like a person who, you know, thinks stealing, harming people, deception is okay. So it makes a lot of sense. A lot. Uh, that, that, that scene uh, reminded me of an incident I had um, a, a white lady um, accosted me at a, at a, a furniture shop that I was there, I was there picking up uh, furniture to be used as props for a movie I was making. And um, I had permission from the, the store owner or whoever, or whatever white person in charge to uh, 
you know, leave my bike um, like next to like next to the door. And um, this white lady, you know, walks in the store and she wants she she wants that she wants this couch and she wants the bike moved like immediately. <laughs> and instead of asking me, she just starts like uh like when I when I tell them I'm I'm I'll, I'll move it like uh after I'm done. Uh, she just completely turns into a, a, a yelling a white supremacist, like yelling, name calling, and I, I'm used to this, and I'm very. I'm not very codified, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't. I just tell the lady, "Hey, you're being uh, very uh, racist, and I, I feel like you're attempting to uh, dehumanize me by yelling at me. You're not treating me like a human being." And then she just she's like completely flabbergasted that I'm reacting in this way, and it, it makes her rage even more. So um, I, I'm asked, I'm asked by the store, of course, the the white people all you know unify and they have me get my bike and I tell them I'm gonna leave uh my uh my Asian uh production designer will be staying and she will be you know handling the affairs <laughs> very racist experience reminding me of the scene where uh Van is accused by the random white lady because it always is just a random white supremacist it doesn't matter how they look if they if they have white skin then they could easily snap and you know target you to and mistreat you and accuse you and you know attempt to actually ruin whatever you're doing. And um, they have the power to ruin your entire life in a, in a matter of seconds, you know. Existence, you know, in this system, white people- And notice she had blonde hair. Exactly, yep. Yeah. They're the most powerful white woman. It's, yeah, it's those the lady, hair. yeah, the white lady in my experience was a, a blonde haired uh, white, yeah. white female. Yeah. yeah, but- Yeah, it's good that you can, hi, um, good afternoon, everyone over there um yeah mary here i just wanted to say that um Trace, you speaking up on your experiences in the uk is just very it's good it's very enlightening because you get you have that outside perspective whereas me who has lived with it kind of all my life you wake up to it in a sense that you just prefer to pick it up as authority like oh you don't leave that there you don't put that there you don't ride on this side um the the countless amount of times that i have been told what direction I should be in. I'm on the wrong side of this. Like, I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going or being told go that way. And it's always a, a white male in my instance as a black woman, maybe for black males, it's white women. That would be their natural form of whom would try to authoritize any situation. Um, even yesterday, I was walking to straight home, just walking home, a single person on the street and there's a group of five, um, white male, white males and maybe two females. They're just kind of grouped up, looks like they're finished college or something or uni. And I'm just walking straight and they walk and I'm just expecting it. I'm expecting it, but so I'm just, I just keep walking direct. And I've made my little, I've held my hand out as if almost like a triangle. Cause I always do that to part ways. So if you live in London or you know the hustle and bustle you just know how to move and maneuver. So I just, I've done that in a sense to let me go through and they stand right in front of me and I go oh of course of course and then they go just move around us and I go no you and I swore I was like you effing move and I it, it was so annoying because it took me out of character and I was really it, it I had to go find a moment of peace but that is the normal interaction of you know why would I move for you you wear the entitled ones you move or do anything extra for us and if it, and I'm always in the, the scenario where I'm always telling myself is this something that they will do no okay then or if you have your phone out i have my phone out at work you cannot now manage micromanage me and tell me to put my phone away this is something that i experience on a daily and i really appreciate um donald glover for highlighting that he definitely did his research because these that is the natural reaction and i thought it was um, amazing in that scene as well because he's just experienced a high level of gentrification um occurring shutting down a restaurant a niche restaurant, in fact, that like he had to drive across town to get to. And it was almost a form of like infiltration. So she's asking all these questions. And then as soon as um, they're gone, he's come back and the, the place is shut down. She even mentions, I never got in contact with her. Therefore, she always had the intention of taking the space or in reinventing the idea of what they're doing here and profiting off it and giving them absolutely nothing in the scene so yeah that was that was a bravo and then immediately after that 
you're micromanaged by um, um, somebody who's uh, has a who's trying to uphold the the law, but in every single way you break the law, and everybody feels the psychosocial effects. And yeah, I just yeah, I just I, I appreciated that scene. This whole episode was just it was just I just I think I mentioned the word. It was powerful programming. Like this is this is powerful programming because you have no choice but to see for what it is. And yes, yeah, fantastic. That, no, that is incorrect. This is not powerful programming unless you're talking about continuing the confusion. In but my it, opinion, thank you. Uh, I don't think this is um, teaching, showing people what racism, white supremacy is and how it works. I don't know if this episode is doing that, but I understand um, where you were um, coming from. Yeah, um, the reason why I say that, I know I wouldn't normally call anything powerful programming, but I mean, there's nothing like it in any form of representation in, in, um, in television. Uh, the fact that um, you had both characters, they, they, both, they mentioned, I think in the scene where if we, we go back to where they're discussing, or you, you, let's say it together, they're gonna kill us. Like that scene there, usually that's the furthest it gets. But the fact that it was taken all the way forever, I think is unique to this show. And that's why we, yeah, it's, we need more like this. Yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna quickly say um, the spook who sat by the door, if you're listening, watch that film, read the book. Um, try to Broke do that before, down. yeah. Try to do that before um, the highly niggerized Amazon TV show or whatever TV show comes out, where they will completely um, destroy the uh, actual constructive information that is in those books and in that film. That film was banned for thirty plus years um, when it was released. Um, very, very interesting uh film if you are a non-white black person it should uh be in your brain computer because uh uh this this episode is you know continuing the theme we are in war you know we are prisoners of war and um we are extremely victimized uh you know people on planet earth and um we are not allowed to live you know we're in, we're in captivity so i appreciate the uh the uh, them verbally speaking, uh, the spook who sat by the door because you know it's great, uh, great film I believe. Yeah, I'm I gonna, agree. Yeah, I'm gonna decode this scene really quickly and then comment on what was said by uh, Miss Mary and Mister Sir. Um, this scene I recall um, Darius. He's talking about my uh, he's talking about non-white food, black food in particular, and um, he. He mentions it and he associates it with being scammed, you know, you know, being um, harmed and mistreated and deception. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is race cold war moment and race and white supremacy. You cannot associate um, black food with anything positive because we know we can't have people liking black people in any way, shape, or form, especially through that, um, you know, significant connection of consuming food, you know, especially, you know. Um, authentic food that has been um, not so poisoned, such as um, uh, most foods have been. But I um, thought that was really, really interesting. And this is uh, seen here is very, very um, significant because it shows how uh, the racist woman and the racist man have become, you know, just masters of infiltrating, you know, through questions, through, you know, yeah, you don't even know why they're asking questions. Next thing you know, they have an outpost you know, next to you, you know, in this case, it was a, a food truck, but yeah, she did her uh, like, interrogation, she did her intel, her, her reconnaissance, and, and, and she um, she did her work, and, and now she has established another, um, you know, racist settlement or something along those lines, you know, took over a Black area, you know, conquered it, conquered a, a Black restaurant, conquered Black people, pushed them out, you know, while she did it in a very refined way, you know, under the guise of, hey, I'm giving you money, and now, you know, you have to go away, it's still being, it's still conquering, it's still uh, racism, white supremacy, in effect, and, um, yeah, in regards to uh, what Miss um, Mary said, it's very interesting that they uh, 
mentioned um, they're going to kill you when they were talking about Martha Luther King and spook who said by the door. Uh, I just talked that up to um, zero risk thinking. You know, when you think, you know, attempting to solve the race problem or help Black people is it, not worth the effort because you think something bad is going to happen. It's very, very possible, of course, something bad is going to happen because that is the, the, the design. But it's talking about it in that manner, just, um, and who is they, by the way? They said they're going to kill you. They didn't say racist men, racist women, or white people are going to kill you. So that was also uh, interesting. They is white people, racist men and racist women. Yeah, uh, that was that kind of was reinforced throughout the episode. Exactly. That's exactly what I was about to say. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it starts off by saying, uh, you know, ultimately those people tried to help black people. They died, didn't get anything done. And then throughout the episode, uh, the, the strong themes of name calling coons was was strong throughout the episode and just showing you that, you know, black people don't want to help black people. Black people don't want to do anything for black people. Black people aren't looking out for themselves because uh, as, as I think we're looking at this, remembering black fear, right. From the ISIS papers, the fact that all of the black people who have tried to produce something constructive for black people or produce a system of justice have all been killed in front of black people. And we're, we're constantly being showed these images and taught about it to every day, uh, well, mostly in, in schools that, so this, it, it reinforces it and it show it just reminds people that black people aren't gonna do anything for you. Those are, that was another, like I said, the huge theme for me in this episode was White people are ignorant about racism and black people are black people are the main problem as to why racism exists. Really, you got the theme that white people are confused after they made they took paper boys, um, what is it like don't give it back to your hood? And then re, like, it and, and reinvented and, it and made yeah. it like, yeah. like I thought that was showing how cunning they are, especially exactly. the the part and then the lady who made the um what is that the nija food that was showing to me how, how much more clever they are and how all the like the best that black people can do right now is just use them for their own individual game gain i.e like tickets to see a show he didn't even want his own play made he just wanted money to watch something i i just so yeah, I, I mean, still, I still feel like the theme was that white people are ignorant, you know, even after I, I agree with you, it shows that they're cunning and, and, uh, and whatnot. But even from the from kind of when you think about the, the opening with the with the whole jersey, it promotes that white people are ignorant. Like that, these white people had no idea what they were doing. They, they and, had two numbers up there. They didn't have yeah. to use that number five. They had a number one up there too. Quake who ignorant white people are not ignorant. I wanna, I'm not. I, I, I'm not I, I, saying I wanna, white people are ignorant. I'm yeah, saying exactly. that that's, that's yeah. what's promoting. Wait, Craig, I know you weren't saying that, but the oh, way oh, you oh, arranged your combination of words, it definitely sounded like you were saying that. That's why I would encourage us oh, to oh. very. You know, wait, 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 because wait, even wait, even wait. With, you're trying even, to say that. They're promoting that white people are ignorant. Not that they really are, that they're promoting yeah. it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I, I don't, even, I, I don't even... Five, they're like, oh, that this is to, for our anniversary. That, that's what they said. That was the justification for, for putting the five on it. I don't know if anybody caught that. Super so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I caught that. But um, I think that was, I think this is all intentional. I think... Uh, <laughs> The the five year anniversary is something that they use to, you know, codify their lie, and um, mm. and and to me, what the evidence I I would use to back that up is how they had already, um, it looks like they already had knew who they were gonna yeah. use to uh, you know, counter counter the plan, and, and also um, when we're doing the panel, uh, they're all like uh, they immediately use the black people as mouthpieces, and then they get Khalil to say. That racism is gonna end uh, in two years from now. That racism will be done and without mentioning any way for it to be constructively uh, removed. Um, and then they're all, like, if you look at the body language and how they're like 
you know, surveying their uh, headpieces. They they know exactly what they're doing, and um, they they were not ignorant in making the shirt. The shirt they knew there were going to be controversy, and this is how these actual white supremacist uh, fashion companies do. They they do these for the publicity because they know the uh, dominant theme is anti-blackness. They know that most people on planet Earth have been programmed to hate, despise, and like loathe the blackness and black people in general. So if they make fun of black people publicly, they'll make way more money. If they humiliate black people on their uh, slogans, they'll make way more money. That's that's proven. And um, this episode is uh, showing, showing that in a way as well, I believe. But um, th there is no ignorance in any of their uh, fashion design. That's all intentional, I believe. That's, that's my theory and that's what I have um, uh, thought to be true for all uh, fashion con conglomerates since the beginning of time. I believe it's always been, you know, for the betterment and refinement of uh, being superior to uh, Black people and um, being viewed as such suits and whatnot. You know, it's just, it's all very uh, by design, I believe. There was a moment when they were sitting down <laughs> And they're playing the Nigerian movie. Ms. V, you sound and a little then, far from your mic. Oh, there's a moment in the in the show where they were playing a Nigerian movie and the black female came in in a white, it looked like a white wedding gown and how um, the people in the house were laughing at her. And that just goes to show, to me, that's all, this is how I took it. So that just goes to show how far reaching, how racism, white supremacy, how it's global that it's even touched Nigerian, AKA non-white black people, that black female. I mean, to think that you're gonna get married in a white gown and notice that her, it looked like her fiance was sitting down playing some type of chess game or whatever. And they all were laughing. And I'm like, yeah, white people are laughing at us. But um, of course, in the movie they had non-white people. Um, like, I don't know, did y'all catch the Nigerian movie and did y'all see any message in that? Yeah, this part. Um, I just see a, a bunch of victims laughing at another victim and she's in a, in a white dress. So I'm not, I'm not, I, I would need some more context, but I yeah. think, uh, I think it, there's definitely some symbolism of all those, of all the, uh, the victims laughing at the other victim. Yeah, yeah, Miss Miss B, your analysis um, allows me to, you know, greater analyze this this um, this scene because yeah, I didn't think much of it. I I really didn't. I just you know saw victims of racism laughing and mistreating one another. But yeah, this is um, the far-reaching effect of racist men and racist women and their system of white supremacy. We have victims globally not just dark skin victims but victims with those what they what have been described as slanted eyes um across the planet um want like practicing these uh, racist customs like, hey I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this white dress i'm gonna call myself a wife i'm gonna get a husband and we're gonna live happily ever after they have um given us these silly um, ideas and led us to believe that we can be husband and wise when um, that's not the case um, at all. I would encourage everyone to go to producejustice.com to acquire a copy of the code book to understand why that is not the case. Um, but yeah, it's really a, a tragic. And again, to, to add a little race code war into it, um, when the whiteness, the, the white um, dress symbolizing, you know, purity, you know, and, um, you know, and something um, perfect. That is certainly uh, not the case when regarding um, anyone on this planet. There's no such thing as a pure, perfect person on a planet dominated by a racist man and racist woman. But yeah, very telling and that they're mentioning they're playing some sort of um, chess game, some sort of game that requires a lot of um, thinking, mental capacity, I'm sure. But, you know, we won't use that mental capacity to think about the things we are doing or the system of white supremacy globally. This is um, our, our problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's interesting that you'd mentioned as well that they're playing chess and that while they're laughing, it's almost as if, well, for me, the way I decoded that is that they play the game of chess so they understand the rules and 
here is this um, black female um, trying to aspire to a, a level of you know purity or wanting to be be married everything that you you had just mentioned there and they're laughing at her so as in to say that get that part that doesn't work here silly that's silly so it's almost like the people with the chest know the rules so yeah it kind of what's the word Conf um validates that what they're doing is is correct in a sense so them laughing at her is, is is showing her how silly she is for that for wanting that or trying to aspire to that and yeah. notice how the white woman the white woman after watching this whole scene she's like is this hamlet ain't no way in heck you thought that was <laughs> yeah and that's genevieve as well she's an actually a very famous nollywood actress so if anybody who watches Nollywood movies that saw that would re recognize her instantly. And one of like my reactions as well, someone who has seen Nollywood movies since a child and she's been, she's the, the Nollywood actress, um, I would say. So in that sense, one of, the, one of the, the top three, five, I would say. So in that sense, them laughing at her is even more of a, I would say, message in a sense. Yeah, I, I agree. I, there's no way they thought that was Hamlet. Um, that is simply just filling uh, the air with whiteness. You know, hey, this is not a it's a lot of culture in here. It's not a black people in here. Uh, don't forget about Hamlet. You know, don't forget about my stuff. And then after she says that about Hamlet, uh, she completely goes into uh, you know infiltration mode where she doesn't give one ounce of a crud of what um, Darius is saying. She doesn't care about anything he's saying anymore. She is studying this place and she is devising a plan to take it over and make a large profit out of it in the long run. But, um, but, uh, sorry, did I cut you off? Oh, um, no, I'm good, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. So that's, what, that's what I was talking about. So to like the average viewer, she just seems like she's you know, really liking the, the movie. She's enjoying the food, liking the liking the the atmosphere. You know, not to but to us counter racist, we see her as you know she's infiltrated. So she so she's seen something she likes and she is going to recreate it and make a business idea out of it. To to many people, you know, they don't. <laughs> the white people are constantly being associated with this uh, with that they don't know that they're ignorant. That, that when they are doing this, what you call cultural appropriation, that they, they're not aware of it, they just really liked it. And that's what she's displaying it. So that's why I say that the episode was kind of, for me, pr promoting that white people are ignorant about racism. You know, she, she, put, she put this woman out of business. I don't, know the, I don't know if the woman wanted that or not, but in this scene, she's being, she's being seen, she's being promoted. She Sorry, what'd you say? I said allegedly she bought it. Yeah, allegedly that's what that's what she did. Sorry, that's what she said she did. The history is always written by the victors, so <laughs> there's no way to prove that or anything. Yeah, and why would the windows be boarded up? It's not like you know that, like you know, like someone had to probably break the windows, to open the lock, or the door, <laughs> or something, because I it just it's very suspicious, highly suspect. She she was even talking about how her how her husband wanted a brick and mortar, but the place is the place is boarded up and they're in a food truck. I think that I think it's interesting. I, I feel like there's definitely some deception. I mean, this whole this whole scene was full of deception, but you know she got her on some health code violation and just got the place closed and never intended to buy that place. Just That's, take her that company. seems extremely accurate, definitely implied. Question for the group. Was anybody- uh, Wait, one second. Sorry, Helen. Gotta, gotta shut down because I think the the scene where the woman is offering, bringing your own food will cook it in the back for you. That's definitely some type of health violation that she probably reported on. I agree. They report and observe, observe and report. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Helen, but I wanted to insert that before we move to a different topic. But I do believe she sabotaged this woman's establishment quite easily too. Okay, staying on the same topic. 
Notice the part where the white woman, when the white woman said, oh, I love her. Talking about Mimi. Remember that part? Um, To go off. Wait, wait, hold on. Should I read love from the word guy? Because we really got to, you know, understand what this love is. Read it. Read it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, yeah, because, you know, I, I hate, I kind of hate this word these days. Because uh, this has caused right. a lot of damage. To- all the music, all the old R&B, maybe today too. Love, love, love. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm in the word guide. I'm, I found love 211 from the, a compensatory counter racist codified word guide. You can acquire this text from producejustice.com. So it says, love, use this word with caution. Do not use this word to describe any condition that now exists between the people of the known universe. Instead, use terms like affection, affectionate, caring, concern, considerate, cooperative, helpful, supportive, etc., to apply to speech and action between persons, creature, and or things that produce a constructive result. Do not use the word love to apply to such speech or action. When others use the word love, ask for a detailed explanation that you can easily understand. When people say that they love someone or that someone loves them, it is correct to ask those people to explain exactly and in detail what they mean. Ask questions. Questions. Why is the word love used to apply to circumstances where people are either mistreating each other or where people are deliberately not trying to help people who need help the most? Can there be love where there is no justice? Can love exist in the absence of correctness? How exactly does one person prove his or her love for another person? What is the exact test which persons are so-called worthy of love? When, how many, under what conditions? Is it correct for a person to love everybody? If so, how should that love be expressed? What exactly are the ways to express love for a person in each and every area of activity? Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war slash counter war. What exactly is love? How exactly does a person prove that he or she loves another person? Is romance the same as love? What actually, what exactly is the difference between love and friendship? Is it French, is friendship a part of love? And if it is, how is friendship expressed during a love relationship? Is it correct for a person to love every person? Is it correct for a person to do harm to any person that he or she loves? Is it correct for a person to do harm to any person that he or she does not love? Can love produce mistreatment? Can love exist without justice? Is it ever correct to express love for a person by killing that person? When, for what reason and or what condition? Is love conditional? If so, what does that mean? Is love so-called limited or unlimited? Are there different degrees of love? If so, how many degrees does love require in order to qualify as love? Is it correct for a person to love all persons equally? If it is correct, how must this love be shown, expressed, practiced? Why is sexual intercourse sometimes called making love? Is it correct to associate acts of sexual intercourse and or sexual play as a test of the existence or of the non-existence of love? Is it correct to regard sexual intercourse or to regard the absence of sexual intercourse as being proof or non-proof of the existence of love? The quite ginormous definition of um, love and necessary because it says term has been used to sabotage and destroy and confuse 
a large number of people. And he also has a definition for um, love making. So I would definitely encourage folks who probably can't even get the full understanding from me reading it. They may have to read it themselves. So go to producejustice.com, order your copy of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept Textbook Workbook for Victims of Racism and White Supremacy. And also order your word guide where I ordered this. I mean, where I um, read this definition from. I'm sure you can spare and invest a few nickels in yourself and improving your thought, speech, and behavior while under the system of white supremacy so that you may, in your existence, work to solve the race problem once and for all. And I'm gonna need my line, Miss B. Question for the group. Was anybody able to decode when Darius put the white shoestring around his head in the beginning of the show? I saw that the second time around. No, that I was the scene where, where, where he was going to talk to the uh, white woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. Anybody yeah, so. able to decode that? What do y'all think that means? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. What do y'all think that means? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've seen his his attire always like eunuch based ever since Mister Evolutionist from Justice has made that analysis. So I just see it as his, his attire, he is a a eunuch, you know, not a threat to the system of white supremacy. A person who would rather, um, you know, make it just not a threat to white supremacy, race and white supremacy, but. Again, I am um, probably missing um, the symbolism in this in this um, in this scene and what this white shoe thing represents. Are there ever any scenes where Darius interacts with non? I feel like this whole season he's only interacted with white people, except for like the people, the main characters. It's almost like he's like a white liaison or something like a middle last year he was like um because because matter of fact the um guy that directed and wrote this uh, episode he also wrote uh champagne poppy which was the, uh like the seventh episode of season two and there's like you know a couple scenes where darius is talking to a non-white black female um but you know uh when um when uh, vanessa brought up him saying that uh we're in a uh simulation that was also from that episode uh, from uh the uh the champagne poppy episode where where he was talking to the black female and saying that we're in a simulation so again they're giving him weird lines to say uh throughout the whole show so yeah um the first episode he was interacting with that uh non-white non-black female um, but I think I think calling Darius a liaison for white people would be accurate. Um, in most episodes, he has been. He is the one that's mostly doing the, the interacting with white people. Maybe that's why they perceive him to be like so confused and like uh, like a, a robot. Uh, I I suspect you know they just kind of make him look like an idiot. But I think also the characteristics of an android is accurate. Also, my, a lot of confusion. Darius is definitely the most confused of the black males that we are taking this um, journey through victimization with, indeed. Uh, Mr. Perry, were you going to chime in? I'm sorry, man. Um, I just got in. I'm trying to. Oh, no, no worries, no worries. All right, so skim me through. Uh, I still have have any man um, got through half of my notes from this episode. Um, huh, so I recall Alfred Paperboy um, saying something along the lines that um, he, 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 he shot niggas, and this was uh, in response to um, um, Donald Glover, Ern saying that, "Are you like what are, what are the streets going to think 
you know like what are the streets gonna think about about you doing this um this um fashion this fashion thing and then he says um you know i i've shot niggas i did quote that as um i've killed niggers and i don't care what niggers think of me you know because you know i i kill them you know and um you know i was like oh wow that's you know it's pretty um logical you know we're not supposed to really care about what black people think and we're supposed to you know easily um you know understand that yeah black people are going to be killed 24 7 constantly by white people and by a couple of um non-white people so um yeah that's why i declare that as uh, i'm sure other folks um uh, caught that but just like the nonchalantness of it just how easily you know I, i've shot niggas it's the same nonchalant attitude that we can hear in um area three entertainment and um so-called a lot of hip-hop slash rap music of um you know just black males and non-white people singing yeah. and dancing about killing one another can you hear me? yeah you can be heard so yeah, I, I want to contribute on that thought because another another um, undertone I caught under um, uh, that scene with the you know I kill niggas is right. You know, you're, you're, you have a little echo. Well, not echo, but it sounds very. Uh, um, I mean, fix that real yeah, it, it sounds good now. Sounds good now. Okay. Well, I was just saying, like when you when we um, attribute ourselves to killing niggas. Not only you know what you what you said, but it, it almost like attributes to like you know I'm cool type of thing. You know I'm cool because you know no no matter what I do this fashion this and that I kill niggas and niggas still kill each other's cool type of thing too. You know. Yeah, many of the uh, artists who are being racially showcased have made their their livings and their careers off of being uh, promoting, ki promoting killing, uh, maiming other victims of racism, other black people. Uh, I suspect that Paperboy is no different. So for him to say that, I think, you know, he's, he's you know, doing exactly what his programming is, is suggests that he does, is, you know, kill black people and don't feel bad about it. Yeah. That's why, that's why exactly. I wrote down anti-black. It's yeah, of it reminds me of the the real life scenario involving uh the baby, where he uh, shot a uh, non white black male at uh, at Walmart, I believe, and I uh, murdered him. And um, enjoys he enjoys a large amount of success. Well, not success, you know, but in his mind, he probably perceives it to be a success as he's racially showcased as um very popular rapper. A very popular gangster rapper, um, known for killing someone, allowed to be famous, allowed to uh, have access to a large amounts of money, uh, allowed to uh, feed millions of people his uh, music and his his ideas and his words. Um, very insane system we're living in, and this, that was another example. Like when I heard that line, I um, just had to burst out laughter because it was just so so accurate. Um, of what's actually happening and the mindset that, that these uh, individuals um, have. That, good. that, was, I've been that given. was one of the things I, I said earlier, I tend to laugh at the, the things that are most victimizing about people. That was one of those things that I laughed at, you know, because it, that is something I know I shouldn't be laughing at and is not funny, but due to my conditioning and my programming, you know, it's, it's it's hilarious to talk about how black people are dying. I think, you know, I'm not saying it's just it's just one of those things. Yeah, just to echo what Mr. Perry said, in this system, it is very um so-called cool to to kill niggers, to kill black people. As we have all have been trained globally. We have been trained this a very long time ago. And I'm sorry to interrupt again, but oh Oh no no no, um, Perry, uh, Mr. Perry, definitely not interrupting um, at all. Okay. Just go ahead. Okay. So yeah, um, I was on Twitter yesterday, and it came uh, recently some news that I think the baby shot somebody else, but he actually spared their life this time instead of actually killing them. And so, like you know, 
a lot of the feedback and the, um, the comments were like, oh, he now, uh, he's gonna, uh, you know, you spare, if you actually, you know, spare somebody's life or a nigga's life, you know, you can actually, you can live with actually getting sleep type of thing instead of fully killing it. And this is actually, this is like other black people confirming it, you know, the action also. And there's many people going to this, going towards, you know, the baby side as far as like, oh, you don't want to try him because he definitely would kill you type of thing. And, like, and then, you know, with his, with his lyrics and then just the type of portrait he, uh, you know, his image is, it's like, like they got the whole community hit to like confirm him no matter what he does because he killed, he killed him. So he, he definitely would kill him. And it's, it's just, it's just that one. It's going to be like, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy hip hop, but like if the, how, you know, the new generation is coming like under wrap with the violence and then, you know, the, the glorifying, killing each other even more. And then, you know, when we thought the blood was going to be, it's, it's, you know, it's just kind of scary because, you know, life is not even really, you know, my life, life is not deemed as valuable anymore. You know? Oh, Mr. Perry, you said something very important. <clears throat> All right, so life, uh, non white people, especially black people, um, we don't, we, we are not allowed to live. The best, at best, we are existing. So, no, um, what we've learned from race, cold war, Urugu, the ISIS papers, the, the code book by Neely Fuller Jr., the delectable Negro, the man not, is that non white people classified as black do not have a life, there's no value to our existence with what we have currently on this planet and existence. What does have value though is white babies, white children, white women, and white men because we are in a system of racism and white supremacy. So yeah, the, the attitudes that you are observing, very common, very expected. This is the, the training, this is the training that white people who practice racism pump out 24 seven in, 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 in all of their areas of people activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex and war. They're, they're, they're conducting a war against us in all of these areas 24 seven. Mr. Mr. Six. Yeah, this remind me of uh, just a more recent more recent confirmations uh ed buck uh serial killer politician actual you know rapist uh drug dealer you know um white affluent politician um sentenced to what 30 years for killing multiple black males um i'm not sure um if he'll uh <laughs> serve out his entire sentence or if, would, or if they'll kill him, you know, quote unquote, remove him from the, the light and allow him to live quietly on the farm somewhere. I'm not I sure what they do. Yeah. Oh yeah, or he could just be a, a white sacrifice. But this this person definitely is a a, a true Urugu, um, very, very dedicated to the cause. What he was doing was uh, attracting uh, black males um, and uh, participating with them in homosexual, anti-sexual behavior, giving them meth, crack, heroin, from ecstasy, all types of all types of uh, drugs, and then uh, killing them, you know, basically overdosing them on these drugs and allowing them to have access to his wealth um, in the in the in exchange for their uh, their their lives and um very, very uh, sick system we're living in, the baby shooting people, Air Buck, you know, being an active serial killer for years, having law enforcement agencies know about it. Only reason why he's incarcerated now is because of social justice warriors. I think one of the guys' name is Tyreek something. I don't know. I don't know most people's names of, or anything like that. But um, it just reminds me of, uh, of stuff. Um, he reminds me of the, the main guy in this episode. Uh, at Buck, yeah. oh, and and also during his sentencing, they're very len lenient with white people. White people are always treated, you know, fairly. You know, they're, meaning they're treated 
as you treat white people with courtesy. So during the sentencing, the, the judge is talking about all the good things he did, code word, good, the white things that he's done. That could mean, that could be, yo, he's killed a lot of black people for us. Come on, let's be, cut some slack. You remember all the, the laws and all the, the bills he signed? You know, but she's really talking about, you know, he's working for us. Like, if you really get serious and if you are talking about the serious Urugu, they are all about killing us as quickly and as effectively as possible. And they, they're going to have fun with it. You know, hey, I'll kill you while you're on acid, you know, have a trippy time while you die. You know, that's a buck for you. Thank you, Mr. Sick. Above definitely a um, racist white supremacist that all victims of racism white supremacy should know about cut from the same cloth and that's code for you know he's white just like Jeffrey Dahmer <laughs> just like um Dominique I can't forget I can recall his um his other names but large catalog of racist men and racist women who have you know got off on the ultimate destruction of black people, whether it's through uh, raping them. Um, what did Ebuck say? He said he liked to drug them to the point where they were, um, they didn't know where they were and he liked to have their, have his fun with them. You know, and what, what was Jeffrey Dahmer trying to do? He's trying to make, make non-white zombies that he could do whatever he wanted with them. So that that is the ultimate goal of racism white supremacy is for racist men and racist women again these people can only be white racist men and racist women they want their subjects to just be at their total will at their total will in, in all areas of people activity <clears throat> indeed that's another thing from um the episode was that um <laughs> The Tommy Hill figure thing was really annoying to, to hear such just stupidity uttered from um just I'm sure you know that all the writers behind the show they know that um Tommy Hill figure is a is a white person. Yeah, they know Tommy Hill figure is a white person. I'm sure they know about that. But why do we hear the confusion of them joking about him being a non-white person? You know, even though Tommy Hill figure is alleged to have said something along the lines that, hey, if I knew niggas weren't going to wear my clothes, if I knew niggas were going to wear my clothes, I wouldn't have made them. I didn't make my clothes for monkeys. I didn't make my clothes for Black people. He allegedly said something like this on Oprah. You can do your own research to find out if it's true or false. Either way, you know, you know <laughs> it, 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 it's, it doesn't matter. It's it's evident that we are in a um, system of racism and white supremacy because why are they trying to uh, all deception is um incorrect. Why are they trying to promote any sort of this deception that Tommy Hilfiger was a not a white person? It's really bizarre. Um, oh five. Uh, mm -hmm. That um that uh, article I had uh, posted in, in the WhatsApp, uh, I think this actual quote is in that article. You you would just have to like you know scroll down to the um I believe it's the uh, Tommy Hill figure uh part because I think I think it's like like number five or number six. But pretty much I think they actually put his actual quote from the uh, Oprah appearance when uh, he was on there. Let me uh, attempt to get it up again. Yeah, uh, there's so much stuff has been posted in the WhatsApp since then. I can't see it. Okay. Yeah, uh, you have to just scroll up. That's all. It's it's, it's it's like the first one I had like posted. Like I said, I had posted um like a, co a couple other things like that uh, people were referencing from um them uh, bringing up stuff uh, from this episode so sorry about that <laughs> uh no 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 worries <laughs> but yeah tommy hilfiger is a white man suspected racist <laughs> suspected racist if folks have any other uh, notes they want to share <laughs> Uh, 
Um, I guess one other thing is uh, I thought that this episode, well, I mean, I mentioned it, but I think with this whole meeting that they're having, it definitely uh, promotes the idea of name calling and coons. Um, so I, I feel that a lot of victims are gonna be focusing on that theme. And a lot of evidence has shown that name calling, calling other black people coons has ne never produced a system of justice or really produced anything constructive. Um, and also at the end when, you know, um, Paperboy was upset and was having that outburst and then the, uh, the gay male, anti-sexual male uh, Khalil uh, went outside to calm him down and then was talking to him about getting a nonprofit. Um, also another thing, I don't even know if what he was saying was true. From what I understand, um, people don't control the money in nonprofits. Um, I could be in error, but there are a number of nonprofits that exist on the planet and a system of justice has not been produced. So I suspect that that is not going to work. I could be wrong. Um, and his, his character kind of symbolized like, what was interesting too was um, when, you know, Paperboy goes into the room at that, in that scene, there are two black people in the room, all the white people, all the powerful white people are present. And you see the, the gay black male and then the white female, I mean, the black female in the back standing. Um, so it's kind of like they, these people are allowed at, at this so-called table in the room. Once again, Paperboy has not been accepted. You know, black male, this is, this is the second time I think in this series. The first time was the poker game. Now this one, once again, he's not being allowed in the room with the, with the powerful white people. He's not allowed to sit in there. You know, he ends up leaving the, the black male goes back in the gate. The antisexual black male goes back into the room. And, you know, so I think that's very symbolic of what, you know, what's going on. Well said, Mr. Kwaku. And uh, just um, just this, the Khalil's character, shout out to the fellow host who mentioned, uh, you can say that real fast, it sounds like kill him, Khalil, 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 something like that. There's um, this red vest thing, you know, someone mentioned that's supposed to be like a, a reference to D-Ray, you know, but I see like, um, you know, like a target you know, like a, a, a target of a sort, you know, but um, no one's really, you know, in the system of race and white supremacy, no one is gunning for um, anti-sexuals, like at all, unless it's um, less intelligent, racist white people or highly confused victims of racism. Other than that, racist man and racist woman, they, Oh, pr they prefer and appreciate seeing as many countersexuals as possible, also known as LGBTQ um, people, homosexuals, lesbians. They 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 prefer non-white people practicing that sort of um, so-called lifestyle than anything else. Because hey, it means that hey, these people are not gonna focus on racism, and if they are, this may be the result. You know, just not attempting to solve the problem, but attention seeking, material seeking, and glory seeking, as we've been trained to do so. So, a massive confusion, and in BLM, you know, Black Lives Matter is often, um, you know, it's it just it's such a uh, massive display of genius that racists carry and their practice of racism because it's like a, a massive double-edged sword you know some people uh, a lot of people appreciate it a lot of people despise it and um black lives you know have never mattered in a system of race and white supremacy um will never matter in a system of race and white supremacy and if this organization was a constructive value they would be attempting to produce justice guaranteeing no one is allowed to be mistreated and those who need help receive constructive help but they're not promoting that i don't know what they're promoting but it's not justice and um 
excellent display. And along with um, that Khalil character, we have the other non-white people who present themselves to be so-called allies, so-called fighting for um, social justice, social change, whatever that means. You know, we, we must um, cease being um, deceived by um, <clears throat> these people that racist men and racist women put in front of us we must understand that hey we have to go to the source of the problem which are white people who practice racism racist men and racist women and tell them hey y'all need to uh, produce a system of justice or we could kill all of us because no more no more patrick's no more george's no more rihanna's no more blinds no, no more no more mistreatment towards anyone on the planet you know, you can kill all of us and you guys can spend an eternity mistreating yourselves like you were doing before you discovered us as you claim you did. Um, and I'll pause my mic there. The, 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 the sweater thing also looks like a, like a life, um, what do you call it? <laughs> I just had it, like a life jacket. So BLM life jacket, this guy's on support. <laughs> um, yeah, and then it says survivor. Yeah. Um, and also too with this, like I mentioned with the other room, paperboy not being allowed, it's like um it's kind of like with some of the shots, right? It seems like paperboy is the most powerful person in the room or he has the most like influence in the room. But then, you know, right there in the back, you see the uh, the white female and it's like, he's allowed to to have this kind of power. You know, he's, he doesn't, he doesn't carry that same kind of weight when he's in the room with, with uh, white people. But when he's in the room with other victims under the supervalence, under the supervision of a white person, then he, he's, he can, um, somehow be, be allowed to have that power and that influence. So I thought that that was interesting. Yeah, like uh, even when he made his pitch about the commercial that, that he wanted for the, uh, you know, black females to be going around buying from other black businesses, you know, again, you had the white woman in the background writing, writing stuff down that would be correct for their business and not for him to be promoting Black people, you know, uh, well, pretty much, I mean, he was using Ern's idea, but, <laughs> you know, um, for like, you know, Black businesses to be in Black community, so, so to speak. So, yeah. Um, I'm you. Dang. Well, <laughs> what was just said by Mr. Kwaku and Mr. Monsoon, um, allows me to, to decode this energy here and, and, and um, in a, in a different manner and it shows the constructiveness of codification because yeah the whole idea that um black people non-white people have um influence or like power to um do things that white people are not in control of is um exactly what it says on this shirt fake you know you know such thing as a black leader a black influencer this this black spoke persons black spokespeople you know which the code says are just people classified as black who speak for white people and when you listen to a rap song and you hear a um non-white person talking about driving down the street and killing black people that's not really a he's not speaking for himself he's speaking for the the white man and the white woman that have infiltrated and who now live in their mind, who now live in a large number of us minds, minds and mine included. So um, very, very tragic what we're dealing with. Um, there's no, like, you know, picture, um, imagine Jay-Z, you know, and um, a, a black so-called African billionaire and, you know, Akon sitting in a room. You know, those, those people are not powerful, you know. They may not even have a lot of influence. They are still victims of racism and only doing what they're allowed to do 
by the people who are in charge, which are racist men and racist women. And this may be a, a, a um, troubling to to believe or to think about, but this, this is the um, reality that we may or may not be in. And I think the evidence that, and I think the evidence and a long record suggests that this is our reality. This is our existence. And we should be motivated to correct this as soon as possible. You know, we should no longer want to be paper boys, urns, Darius's, Vanessa's, 0526's. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to be this anymore. I want to be a universal male, a well, universal man with and for universal woman guaranteeing that no one on planet Earth is being mistreated and guaranteeing everyone who needs help is getting that constructive help. You know, maybe cruising, you know, through the Jupiter highways on a, um, some sort of hovercraft vehicle. But um, yeah, what we have right now, totally um, just incorrect. And I'm gonna pause my mic. Since I feel like we may have um, gone through our notes, let me make sure I covered everything. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look at my notes. I think I mentioned the things that I, I remember. Um, yeah, I thought it was like, if you understand some aspects of racism and white supremacy, then this is these are really great pieces of uh, propaganda to dissect and, you know, focus on because um, it serves a purpose and um, it it tells you how you should be uh, if you want to advance. And um, I heard people talking about the clothing on Khalil and I just saw his, his outfit as like a pawn, like a pawn slash willing sacrifice, you know, like a pawn slash willing sacrifice. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I suspect he's also um, Nigerian, and I suspect that area of the world, that imaginary he is. yeah, that imaginary concept known as Nigeria, has has recently been in hot water because they're saying, "Hey, we got two Rihanna anti-sexuals popping off over here. What's what's going on? Should should we um, stop this?" And while they're the way they're going about stopping the anti-sexual um, promotion by racist men and racist women may not have been uh, constructive. Um, that's what they were, they were they were trying to do. And um, yeah, so very um, you know the people behind the show they're somewhat uh, are aware of um, what's happening, yet does not seem to be pointing us in the direction of um, hey let's, let's solve this problem you know, let's solve this problem. I'm reinvesting in a hood, a community, it's not going to solve this problem. Even if they, they all work together to, 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 um, to do um, Paperboy's idea, it, it was not, not going to solve the race problem, and it was not going to um, help a lot of Black people, because I don't know a lot of non-white people who are classified as Black that have businesses, who are maintaining businesses. I, there could be a, a number of us who have those things, but I'm not privy to that information. So um, just, you know, giving us concepts that we have a community, false, ain't no such thing as a Black community, ain't no such thing as a, even a Black neighborhood, because, you know, what is, um, what are neighborhood, we're supposed to be neighborly to each other, and um, according to the record, that's not what's happening in, in our so-called areas. They have trained us to be against one another, you know, and we, even, even when we're not, you know, shooting one another we're trying to you know compete against one another by saying by by saying who can have the the best lawn or the 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 best um car in our garage or our parkway just show off is them and you know it's not our fault um that we are in this predicament but as i read recently from um april williams it is definitely our problem that we have to solve
So, um, sir, you did join us a little later, I think. I decoded this uh, this little mascot here as a um, skunk slash um, raccoon slash coon slash rodent, and just that associating that with um, athletic clothing and athletic clothing being code for code for black people. <laughs> if you had any thoughts about this uh, caricature here, well, <laughs> well. I completely uh, like I, I didn't even register. Like I'm, it's my first time seeing the this, this the image of the actual cartoon character, and yeah, it is a uh, <laughs> actual raccoon. <laughs> so, uh, uh, very um, very blatant in your face uh, racism. You know, you know, we all know that there is historical ties with that word and associating. Black people with uh, raccoons, thieving raccoons, um, race code word. Uh, very interesting um, uh, decoding. I agree with what you're saying. I totally missed that. Very, and it, I love how most of the shots in Atlanta are static. Camera doesn't move very much in the show, um, but here it moves to like really put it in your face. I thought that was very uh, blatant seeing it now because um, I did notice uh, whenever the camera moves in Atlanta, I, I always pay attention because I know that uh, this is a show where they, 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 they really put a lot of attention into detail and to having these wide shots most of the time, you know, but uh, very interesting. <laughs> All right, if folks don't have any closings, closing comments, I think I can um, close out with our quote from um, a calendar of revolutionary daily thoughts, Nyan Sesim. So folks want to share a closing comment? The, the only closing, the only thing I want to say in closing is um, Black people should not be focusing on other Black people. That is what the system of racism, white supremacy wants you to do rather focus on white people and how they practice racism and producing a system of justice, producing constructive results. Well, black people, no matter if they're coons, if you believe they're a coon or whatever, they are not the problem. White people practicing racism, in my opinion. Indeed, Mr. Kweku. And, and before, I, I've been forgetting to mention this over and over. <sighs> Lime 22 said, um, notice he is also wearing nail polish. And yeah, Darius is always wearing nail polish in this, in this show. And yeah, that just the, uh, could be the feminization, could be the confusion, could be a mixture of both. But yeah, good eye. Well, any other folks would like to share a closing or maybe wrap up some notes they didn't? Um, share. All right, excellent. All right, so <clears throat> the quote of today, because we have been led to believe that it is April 22nd, 2022, and I am reading from Nyan Sesim, A Calendar of Revolutionary Daily Thoughts by Mawalimu K. Barudi. And this is from April 22nd. The record of the 5,000 years that ended with the European conquest of the whole continent in the 19th century shows that every African state remained relatively secure and independent as it maintained a strict policy of excluding foreigners from settlement within its borders. Chancellor Williams, we have been told that the best way for Africans to be at peace with themselves in this cultural wasteland is to forget the past and build a new future as subjects of European society. We are further informed that given the imperfection of humans, the European model of civilization is the best we could ever imagine. 
and they urge us toward their interpretation of reality by saying that if we just become more open-minded, i.e. open to their mind slash misinterpretations, we will see that they have become multicultural, bringing the best of all worlds together under their impartial color colorblind protective umbrella. In order to become part of this new world order, though we must relinquish the past, we must forget both what they have done to us and who we are. This your reason is nonsensical for those of us who know that we are the culmination of our people, for we are our people. To destroy the true memory of our people is to destroy ourselves. Affirm, Sanakofa is my motto. And um, I'm gonna decode this for folks who may be a little bit, <clears throat> who may need that. So Sankofa means to um, take back, but perhaps Chauncey Williams is telling us to take back our black self-respect, which is wanting and working to not be victims of racism and solving this race problem. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. This channel obviously is not um, that promoted by the algorithm that white people control. So yeah, please like, share, and subscribe if you can, comment if you can. CRWS signing out. Thank you for your participation.